and we will start off with New York City FC. So a quick rundown of New York City FC. Head coach Ronnie Dyla is entering his second year, possibly third. Um, I believe it's second. I could be wrong. I probably should have looked that up already. Um, last year, they finished fifth in the East, East, seventh in the league, and lost to Orlando in that phenomenal Thumbly Kick shootout in the playoffs, which I could watch over and over and over again. Um, fantastic. Just love that. Love when you see a team like that lose to a field player in goal. Great stuff. 12-8-3 and three record. Um, really, so far, they've only brought in one player uh, in Amundsen, um, plus, like, a backup goalkeeper, I think. So, still no strikers. Um, key departures, Alex Ring, uh, Ronald Matarita, and Alexander Matritsu. Last year, they played a 4-2-3-1. And I can't see him getting away from that after looking at their roster as it stands currently. Um, you're probably going to look, of course, Sean Johnson in goal until he gets sold to Juve for playing four games. I don't know. Uh, Tinner home, of course, at right back. Kyans and Chanel in the middle. You have to think Amundsen's going to take that left back spot that Matarita left. Uh, Parks and Sands going with the two DM look there. Uh, Maxi at center attacking mid. With Jesus Medina, uh, Ismael Trejuri Shrardi, who, if he's healthy for more than seven games, is automatically a successful season. And with Tati Castellanos at striker. That's got to be the general look, I think. Anybody have any any thoughts on that? Do you think you can see anybody else slotting in there? Not that I can think of. That's, I mean, that's arguably their strongest eleven with who they have, unless there's, like, someone they're, you know, in the works of bringing in that's going to slot in immediately. But looking at this 11, and obviously we don't know if that's actually going to be the 11, but, like, I don't hate it as much as I thought it would. Um, I don't know. I can't. I don't know depth-wise how they're looking. My guess would be not great, considering they don't have a striker. But as far as an 11 goes, like, this isn't horrible. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I, I think, like, their starting 11 is going to be strong, but then it's, like, as soon as you lose a guy or two, then we're, you know, starting to go into some trouble territory. 100% agree. You've got a bear who's coming off an injury. Nicolas Acevedo was one of their most used uh, substitutes last year in the center of midfield. However, he's 21 years old, still wearing braces, not quite sure what he can do actually on the field. Um, granted, I didn't watch him too closely. Um, you've got one backup center back in Sebastian Ibiaga. Um, Tony Rocha. Goodman, uh, Goodmunder Thorarensen also playing at left back, so he can swap in with uh, Amundsen. And that's about it. That's probably, you got Gideon Zellalam, who didn't see the field last year. Maybe he gets on. Um, their depth is not there. It is um, probably one of their weakest points and why they will have trouble succeeding late in, in the year. Um, I mean, you saw Maxi was hurt halfway through the year. They couldn't create anything. And if he goes down again at age 34 now, which, Connor, what's that phrase that we like to talk about? I, I think it's something about being on, like, a weird side of 30, something like that. He's way on the wrong side of 30. Yeah. <laughs> and and people know that you hit him, he's going to stay down. So um, you hit him enough times, he won't he won't step back on the field. Depth is going to be an issue for this team. Um, the other thing that's going to be an issue, you're trying to play with wide midfielders in Medina and Shajuri Shradi. You play on a baseball field where you don't have wide players. So the, the it's a very defensive-minded counterattack system and this is where we get into that system formations coaching decisions and trusting the system that's the quote of the day trusting the system here would mean sitting in defense letting James Sands and Keaton Parks clean up in front pick the ball up and find one of the four attacking players up high and see if they can just go counterattack every time I don't think you're going to see a ton of buildup. Um, 
let me take that back. I think you will see a little bit more buildup than meets the eye. If Ronnie Dyla puts it into their brain to do so, I think you what he's either going to do one of two things. He's either going to basically make it look like Comac Soccer Sunday League on the turf, where after 15 minutes, you're going to have a huge gap in midfield. James Sanders is going to kick the ball as far as he can. They're going to pick up on it and go. Or he's going to have Maxi drop into that gap that's going to be created when they sit back, pick up the ball, and either lay it off or turn and try and build. That's that's what we're probably going to look at here. Um, I would prefer to see Maxi drop in and pick up the ball. However, I'm just not sure. It, it, I'm just not sure which way it's going to go. Um. So as far as depth, I mean, I, I agree. I think New York's probably the good example of like they they definitely don't have the the squad depth that you would think that an, a professional sports team should have. But then I would argue the flip side of that is MLS isn't a league where teams have a lot of depth. So I think of the LAFC team where you would argue had 14 players that like actually saw the field. Um, like I can't think of a, a team that has like a solid seven guys off the bench that they can bring in. Maybe Columbus is here because Columbus is just a joke at this point. Uh, I'm not ready to get angry about that right now. Yeah. Um, but the flip side of that is I think their attack will look a little bit better than you're giving them credit for. So to Jury Shroudy, um, playing on the right, like he played as a 10 last year for a decent chunk of the season. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where most of his goal contributions came from. So I think the fact that because they play on such a narrow field, he's going to be more central anyway. So, like, he, yes, he's technically an outside mid, but when your field is 10 feet by 10 feet, like, everyone's a center mid. We've spoken Medina, about Medina's this. In the, Medina in that same category, too. Yeah. So, like, we, we've spoken about how they only play really with six center mids, and that's about it. So I think – those attacking guys should be hopefully better than we give them credit for. Yeah, it, it's de it really depends on who they're going up against, I think. If they're going to go up against a team that thinks they can go and, and attack and keep the ball but make constant mistakes in the midfield, a la New York Red Bull, they're going to get countered and destroyed. And that's what happened in the last game of that last season, right? Um, if we're talking about players who need to have a good 2021, Jesus Medina needs to show that he deserves a DP contract. What has this man done to be considered DP? This man makes Gonzalo Verón look like a stud. I always forget he's a DP. <laughs> right? Isn't that wild? <laughs> this man this man is getting paid DP salary. The same types of salaries that David Villa, Frank Lampard, and Andrea Pirlo were getting. And he's done what? He stayed. He stayed. <laughs> he, he ran around a little bit. He's just He needs to show up and prove that he, he deserves that contract, right? Um, other players, I think, uh, Keaton Parks, you're, you're filling the shoes of the best center defensive mid in the league bar Diego Chara. That's a lot of pressure. You need to be spot on every single game. Ring never took a game off. You can't take a game off. Um, without Ring, Sean Johnson is going to be under a ton of attack as well as Chano and Kynes. Without having that person in front of them, that's why they're probably going to drop two in front this year. But even then, that doesn't make up for what Ring could do. They're going to have to be some really, really solid defenders this year um, and be on their game. And then the last person I have is Castellanos. Um, he's leading the line on his own, and he needs to score more goals than he takes dives, and I don't know if he can do it. It's just not in his DNA. Anybody else you think needs to have a really good 2021? Uh, I said everybody you said, so not much to add there. I would argue to Jury Shroudy just because Cassianos can't do that all himself. And I, I don't think Medina I, – I don't know. Medina doesn't do anything for me. Like, to Jury Shroudy seems to be, I mean, either their first or second attacking option in terms of, like, goal production and talent. So the two of them are going to have to do something if – they want to win any games. Interesting. Yeah, and then just, I guess, to round out the team, because we're trying not to harp on them too long, 
so this doesn't turn into three hours of us rambling on. Key players to watch for this season, obviously, Andre, um, not Andre, Anton, Anton Tinnerholm. Um, best 11 right back, one of their better attackers last year. Um, one of the best right backs in the league, uh, bar Kyle Duncan. Um, hey, that's not even a joke. Kyle Duncan's the best right back. In the league. Yeah, it's fair. Um, obviously, Sean Johnson, as we mentioned before, um, U.S. men's national team caliber center back. Um, center back. My goodness, it's been a long day. U.S. men's national team goalkeeper. Uh, he needs to be really solid without ring. Uh, and then finally, Max Morales, missing half the year last year uh, and now with no real striker going up there. He's going to have to create a ton of chances just so they can play the odds game and say, if you create nine chances, one of them might go in. So he's going to have to be really good. Uh, if I'm any other coach, I'm taking my – I'm doing – I'm playing this formation. I'm saying, okay, I've got two center mids. One of them is going to sit next to Max Morales, and anytime he tries to check in the ball, I'm cutting him in half and putting him on the floor. 